Hello friends, welcome to RBI Insights, a platform where you can explore RBI's official website rbi.org.in in a video format. So today we are going to cover a brief about RBI's governor from 1935 till today. Uh, friends, the content displayed in this video is taken from RBI's official website itself. So when you open the website, uh, you just go to about us. In about us, you will find RBI history. Just click on that RBI history. There on left side you will find two things uh, milestone and miscellany. Just click on that miscellany. There you will get the list of the governors along with small description about them. So we will be covering this uh, the list of the governors and we will be also covering small description about them to make this session more interesting. So let's start with our first governor. First governor of RBI, Sir Osborne Smith. His tenure was from April 1, 1935 till June 30, 1937. He was a professional banker and served 20 years with the Bank of New South Wales and 10 years with the Commonwealth Bank of Australia. One thing you should uh, keep note of is that uh, he didn't sign any bank notes during his tenure. Okay. So, our next governor is Sir James Brett Taylor. He was the second governor of the RBI. His tenure was from July 1, 1937 till January 17, 1943. He was a member of Indian Civil Service. He had served over a decade in Currency Department of Government of India. Initially, he was a deputy collector, later a collector of the currency and thereafter he was additional secretary in the Finance Department. He served as the deputy governor of the bank since 1935 and if you see the uh, tenure uh, you will come to know that this period was the war period world war ii was uh, held between this period so he served during that uh, world war period and uh, during this period he, uh, rbi had issued war loan bonds uh, which were sold to the public to raise funds for the war our next governor is Sri Chintamanam Dwarkanath Deshmukh, C.D. Deshmukh. He was the third governor of RBI and first Indian governor of RBI. He was the first Indian governor of RBI. His tenure was from August 11, 1943 till June 30, 1949. He was also a member of Indian Civil Service. He served as Joint Secretary to Government of India in the Departments of Education and Health. He was appointed as the Deputy Governor of the Bank in 1941. And uh, this period was the period of independence. So, during his tenure, he deals with the, uh, he deals with the asset, partition of asset and liability of the Reserve Bank of India between India and Pakistan. He held the smooth transition of the bank from shareholders institution to a state-owned organization when the bank was nationalized in on 1st of January 1949. So he played a very great role uh, during the independence time. Okay, and uh, he was the first governor, Indian governor of Arabia. Next governor is Sir Benegal Rama Rao. He was the fourth governor and the longest serving governor of Reserve Bank of India. His tenure was from July 1, 1949 till January 14, 1957. He was also a member of Indian Civil Service. He served as the Indian ambassador to Japan and also to US. Uh, during his tenure, uh, an All India Rural Credit Survey Committee was appointed and later on, Recommendations made by the committee uh, led to the transformation of Imperial Bank of India to State Bank of India. So this is how State Bank of India was formed. This is, okay. So next is K. G. Ambegaupar. He was the fifth governor of Reserve Bank of India. His tenure was from January 14, 1957 to February 28, 1957. He was also a member of Indian Civil Service. He served as Finance Secretary, Ministry of Finance in Government of India. Uh, in March 1955, he was appointed as the Deputy Governor of Reserve Bank of India. 
his signature as RBI governor does not appear on any Indian note. His tenure was also so short. He was just for 42 days around. He was appointed uh, till the next governor takes his uh, place. So he didn't sign any notes, but as a finance secretary, his signature was uh, appeared on rupees one note issued after independence. Okay, as a fi finance, you must be knowing that finance secretary signs on one rupee note, and on the rest others you will find RBI governor signature. Okay, so next governor is H V R Iyengar. He was the sixth governor of Reserve Bank of India. His tenure was from March 1, 1957 till February 28, 1962. He was a member of Indian Civil Service. He served as the chair, chairman of State Bank of India. During his tenure, uh, deposit insurance for bank deposits was introduced in 1962, making India one of the earliest countries to experiment with deposit insurance. He was also awarded with the Padma Vibhushan. Then next governor is P.C. Bhattacharya. He was the seventh governor of Reserve Bank of India. Uh, his tenure was from March 1, 1962 till June 30, 1967. He was also the chairman of State Bank of India. H.V.R. Iyengar was the second chairman of uh, State Bank of India and P.C. Bhattacharya, he was the third chairman of SBI. So, during his uh, tenure as uh, governor of RBI, uh, IDBI Bank, Industrial Development Bank of India, then Agricultural Refinance Corporation and then UTI, Unit Trust of India. These main, main institutions were established. The credit authorization scheme as an instrument of credit regulation was also launched in 1965, but later it was it was withdrawn. Credit authorization scheme, uh, basically under this scheme, all the commercial banks uh, had to obtain prior approval from the RBI before granting loan of rupees 1 crore or more to a single borrower. That's why this scheme didn't last much as then during his tenure as the governor of RBI, the size of the banknotes of rupees 5, 10 and 100 denominations had been reduced to cut cost of production. So, our next governor is Sri Lakshmi Kant Jha. He was the 8th governor of Reserve Bank of India. His tenure was from July 1, 1967 till May 3, 1970. He was also a member of Indian Civil Service. He served as secretary to Prime Minister. During his tenure, 14 commercial banks were nationalized in 1969. Then, among other developments, Gold controls were brought on a statutory basis. Deposit insurance was in principle extended to cooperative banks. We have seen that Deposit Insurance Corporation was introduced in 1962 during the uh, HVR Iyengar uh, when he was the governor. At that time, Deposit Insurance Corporation was introduced in 1962 and now in 1968, this was extended to the cooperative banks. Then again during his tenure, lead bank scheme was also introduced to facilitate credit delivery. Next governor is Sri Bhaskar Namdev Ardarkar. He was the ninth governor of Reserve Bank of India. His tenure was from May 4, 1970 till June 15, 1970. He was a professional economist. In March 1947, before independence, he was appointed by Government of India to create a health insurance scheme for industrial workers. A year later, the report he submitted became the basis for the employment state insurance. We see ESIC. That's then in June 1965, he was appointed as the Deputy Governor of RBI. Later on, he became the Governor of Reserve Bank of India, ninth Governor. Next Governor is Sri Sarukai Jagannathan. He was the 10th governor of Reserve Bank of India. His tenure was from June 16, 1970 to May 19, 1975. He was a member of Indian Civil Service. During his tenure, Indian rupees note of 20 and 50 denomination were introduced. And this had his signature. So again, uh, 
Credit Guarantee Corporation of India was also established in 1971 during his tenure. Now, see, deposit insurance was introduced in 1962. Credit Guarantee Corporation was introduced in 1971. Later on, we will see uh, they, how they got merged and what was the result of it. Okay. So, just remember that uh, Credit Guarantee Corporation of India was established in 1971. And deposit insurance corporation in 1962. Okay. Our next governor is N. C. Sen Gupta. He was the 11th governor of Reserve Bank of India. His tenure was from May 19, 1975 till August 19, 1975. He was appointed as governor for just three months till Sri K. R. Puri could assume office. Prior to his appointment as the governor, he was working as secretary to the Department of Banking of Ministry of Finance. Okay. So next governor is K. R. Puri, the twelfth governor of Reserve Bank of India. His tenure was from August 20, 1975, till May 2nd, 1977. He served as the chairman and managing director of Life Insurance. Corporation of India before joining as the governor. Uh, during his tenure, RRBs were set up in 1975. RRBs were set up. Okay. Next is Sri M. Narasimhan. He was the 13th governor of Reserve Bank of India and his tenure was from May 2nd, 1977 till November 30, 1977. And he he was the first and so far only governor to be appointed from Reserve Bank Cadre, having joined the bank as research officer in the economic department. Okay, so you can take a note of this who was the first and so far the only governor to be appointed from Reserve Bank Cadre. He was from Reserve Bank Cadre, I think he must have been uh, joined as a grade B then grade C, then grade D. So, after getting promotion, he reached till Governor of Reserve Bank of India. Okay. He was the Chairman of the Committee on the Financial System 1991 and the Committee of Banking Sector Reforms. He was referred to as the Father of Banking Reforms in India. He was the Chairman of this uh, committee and uh, the committee gave very uh, good suggestions and that's why he was referred to as the father of banking reforms in India. Okay. He was awarded India's second highest civilian honor, Padma Vibhushan in 2000. So our next governor is Dr. I.G. Patil. He was the 14th governor of Reserve Bank of India. His tenure was from December 12, 1977 till September 15, 1982. He was also a member of Indian Civil Service and an economist. His tenure witnessed the demonetization of high denomination notes, that is 1000, 5000 and 10,000. 1000 notes was uh, demonetized in 1978, I think. And then it was reintroduced in 2000 or something. And uh, 10,000 notes and 5000 were uh, demonetized and thereafter it was not uh, again reintroduced. Then during his tenure, six private sector banks were nationalized. Then NABARD was established in 1982. Then Deposit Insurance and Credit Guarantee Corporation. I have told you Deposit Insurance that was uh, introduced in 1962 and Credit Guarantee Corporation of India was established on 19. 71. They both were merged to become DICGC. Later, he was bestowed with the Padma Vibhushan Award in 1991. Our next governor is Dr. Manmohan Singh. He was the 15th governor of Reserve Bank of India. His tenure was from September 16, 1982 till January 14, 1985. Dr. Manmohan Singh he was an Indian politician, economist and bureaucrat. 
he was chief economic advisor and also secretary to the finance secretary in finance secretary he worked on reducing economic regulation simplified trade policies and encouraged foreign policies later on he served as finance minister of india and also he was the 13th prime minister of india he is also the recipient of padma vibhushan award in 1987 our next governor is sri amitav ghosh he was the 16th governor of reserve bank of india his tenure was from january 15 1985 till february 4 1985 he was deputy governor of the bank since 1982 when he was appointed governor for a brief period of 20 days till rn malhotra could take over his tenure was the shortest tenure as the governor of reserve bank of india next governor is sri rn malhotra he was the 17th governor of reserve bank of india his tenure was from february 4 1985 till december 22 1990 he was also a member of indian administrative service he served as secretary finance and he was also ed to of the imf during his tenure the discount and finance house of india the national housing bank were set up and indira gandhi institute of development research were also inaugurated during his tenure only 500 rupees note was introduced in 1987 during his tenure only in 1990 he was the recipient of padma bhushan award okay then the next governor is sri s venkata ramanam he was the 18th governor of reserve bank of india his tenure was from december 22 1990 to december 21 1992 he was also a member of indian administrative service During his tenure, country was going through balance of payment crisis, which he had successfully tackled under his leadership. Our next governor is Dr. Chakravarti Rangarajan, C. Rangarajan. He was the 19th governor of Reserve Bank of India. His tenure was from December 22, 1992, to November 22, 1997. He was a professional economist. he held charge as governor deputy governor of reserve bank of india for over a decade that his tenure saw the historic memorandum signed between the bank and the government whereby a cap was put on automatic finance by the bank to the government in the form of ad hoc treasury bills that is ways and means advances were introduced during his time before uh, introducing ways and means uh, advances there were the limit was based on the percentage of government's average annual revenue receipts so whatever amount rbi used to transfer to government the maximum limit was based on the percentage of government's average annual revenue receipts so later on when ways and means advances was introduced decide rbi along with the central government they used to decide the maximum limit in 2002 the government of india awarded him padma vibhushan india's second highest civilian award okay. our next governor is dr bimal jalan he was the 28th governor of reserve bank of india his tenure was from november 22 1997 till september 6 2003 he was an economist during his tenure india weathered the asian financial crisis and has seen the consolidation of gains of liberalization and economic reforms our next governor is dr yaga venu gopal reddy why we reddy he was the 21st governor of reserve bank of india his tenure was from september 6 2003 till september 5 2008 he was also a member of indian administrative service he had 6 year tenure as deputy governor of the reserve bank of india then he was the first to use the term financial inclusion he used this term first time in april 2005 in his annual policy statement as governor of reserve bank of india in 2010 he was awarded india's second highest civilian honor the padma vibhushan okay our next governor is dr d subbarao he was the 22nd governor of reserve bank of india 
His tenure was from September 5, 2008 till September 4, 2013. He was also member of Indian Administrative Service. The global financial crisis erupted within a week of his assuming office. The great global financial crisis. Everyone is aware of this, I think. The crisis in 2007-2008. So, he was the governor during that time. Subbara is credited for having safely stewarded Indian economy through the financial crisis. Our next governor is Dr. Raghuram Rajan. He was the 23rd governor of Reserve Bank of India. His tenure was from September 4, 2013 till September 4, 2016. As a governor of RBI, uh, Rajan made curbing inflation his primary focus. His primary focus was curbing inflation. Bringing down retail inflation from 9.8% in September 2013 to 3.78% in July 2015. See, it was the lowest inflation since 1990s. During his tenure, he enforced two-factor authentication of domestic credit card transactions to ensure the safety of customers. He was honored with the title Governor of the Year for 2014. He was the first governor to get this title. Governor of the Year. Okay. Then our next governor is Dr. Urjit Patel. He was the 24th governor of Reserve Bank of India. He served as the governor of Reserve Bank of India from September 4, 2016 till December 11, 2018. Dr. Urjit Patel, he was an economist. Patel joined the IMF in 1990 he worked on US, India, Bahamas and Myanmar till 1995. Thereafter, he served as Deputy Governor of Reserve Bank of India since January 2013. During his tenure, the Government of India demonetized the 500 rupees and 1000 rupees banknotes of Mahatma Gandhi series with the stated intention of curbing corruption, black money, fake currency and terrorism. So our next and last governor till date is Sri Shakti Kanta Das, the 25th governor of Reserve Bank of India. He took charge on December 12, 2018 as governor of Reserve Bank of India. And uh, till now he is the governor of Reserve Bank of India. He was he is a retired IAS former Secretary, Department of Revenue and Department of Economic Affairs under Ministry of Finance, Government of India. He has always focused on curbing inflation and promoting financial inclusion in the country. Uh, if you just go through his speeches, uh, it, is, it is also, his speeches is also available on the RBS website. You will find in every speech, wherever he, uh, he goes, he just mentioned financial inclusion as his uh, main focus point. His, his vision is to uh, get the uh, banking services available for all the individuals. So, his main focus is basically on financial inclusion also in curbing inflation. So, he, he played a crucial role in steering the Indian economy amid the coronavirus disease, that is COVID-19 pandemic. During COVID-19 pandemic, all the major economies were fallen down. Even India's economy had also fallen, but we grew up in more faster way than the other economies. As a big one, we are one of the largest population country. So dealing such a coronavirus pandemic in a in a such a boldly manner, he his role was also he was for this he was awarded the Governor of the Year. 2023 by central banking. So friends, thank you. Like, share, subscribe.